Hello again, Gary Stearman with another edition of Prophecy in the News. Today we have a very special guest, L.A. Marzulli, and we'll be back to talk with him in just a moment. Well, L.A. Marzulli has produced this video called The Watchers, which we're going to be talking about today. You may recall that about six months ago, uh, Tom Horn, L.A. Marzulli, and myself had a series of conversations right here in the Prophecy in the News studio, and we produced a couple of DVDs. It's a two-DVD set of those conversations called Alien Agenda, and we're going to uh, tell you today how you can avail yourself of both of these, The Watchers and Alien Agenda. L.A. Marzulli, welcome to Prophecy in the News. Great to be here. It's always fun talking to you. Maybe I shouldn't use the word fun because today we're going to be talking about something very serious mm -hmm. and we're speaking from a Christian perspective, by the way, and we believe, and I know that L.A. believes, that we're going to be talking about something that Christians should understand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we made watchers specifically uh, to just get people aware that something is going on. We present a lot of material in the Watchers DVD, everything from orbs and cattle mutilations, human mutilations, uh, so-called implants, abductions, crop circles, and of course, a myriad of UFO sightings that are happening with greater frequency than ever before. And all we're trying to do with Watchers 1 is you sit down, watch this thing with your family, and I would caution people, I would say 16 years to 18 years and mm -hmm. older, Certainly this is not for little kids. Um, we need a degree of maturity here. And sit down and watch the, the dialogue after, it's been, after people view it. Because there's so much information there. And most people are just ignorant of the fact that these things are manifesting. That this phenomena is manifesting on a global level. And so the purpose of Watchers is, Watchers 1, it's, it is episodic. Be, we're working on 2 and 3 is, is up on the drawing board. But the purpose of it is to awaken the viewer to this phenomena. Later episodes, we'll talk about what the phenomena is. Now, Christians, I believe, and our viewers in particular, have become sensitized to the fact that uh, there are prophecies concerning the latter days, and we know that the latter days, in part, will be distinguishable because of the rise of powers that have been suppressed or mm -hmm. repressed mm -hmm. over the years, mm -hmm. but in the latter days, those powers will emerge once again, and one of our favorite verses uh, has to do with some, some of the words of Jesus. In Matthew 24, uh, starting in verse 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And what he's saying here is it, the days of Noah will be sort of transplanted into the latter-day era. Mm -hmm. And you and I both believe we're seeing that absolutely, right now. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, one of the, uh, what, if, in my opinion, we're looking at the return of the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. It's a different uh, incursion than what happened thousands and thousands of years ago. I believe, I call it the, the coming great deception. And what we're going to see is, or what we are seeing is this manifestation of orbs and craft and, and other phenomena, other anomalies. Meanwhile, shows like the History Channel's Ancient Aliens yes. program is promulgating what I call the coming great deception. They're saying that E.T. created all life on this planet, that they genetically manipulated all life on this planet, that they started the world civilizations and religions and now are coming back at this critical juncture in human history. Well, Christians and the church better wake up to what is happening because this phenomenon is real, burgeoning, and not going away. Let me ask a question. Space aliens. Everybody knows those two words mm -hmm. put together, mm -hmm. and they all have an image that pops into their head when they say space aliens. Now, what, what should Christians believe about space aliens? Well, I don't believe that there are space aliens. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I believe that what these entities are, in fact, are demons and fallen angels. Okay. And I make a distinction in Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural, um, another book, but but I make a distinction between those two. And what is manifesting is not from other planet, it's not interdimensional, or it's not extraterrestrial. It is, I believe, interdimensional. And what we're seeing are fallen angels and demons manifesting. And let me just throw this into the mix, that um, it's now 2011. There are over one billion abortions 
on this planet. I'm opening mm. up a can of worms here, but I want to get to this because I, I think it's important. I believe that abortion is a ritualistic, satanic blood sacrifice. Wow. And with one billion of these things happening since Roe v. Wade, we have opened, literally opened the gates of hell on this planet, which is why we're seeing more and more uh, uh, ufology and these things manifest. Think for a moment back in the ancient times, the sacrifice to Moloch and, and these all Canaanite gods. It was all ritualistic blood sacrifice. We're mm -hmm. doing exactly the same thing today. We've opened the gates of hell. Wow. What a statement. Now, in the Old Testament era, uh, we, we hear about false gods of all kinds, Moloch uh, and Baal <coughs> demanding the blood sacrifice of Asheroth, children, for right. example. And we think of those savages, those primitive tribalists back in mm -hmm. that day, who were so stupid that they offered blood sacrifices to imaginary gods. And we tend to discount that. But you're saying there's something real to, to blood sacrifice. Absolutely. The life is in the blood. We're told that in Scripture. And with one billion abortions in order to kill, what can be more innocent than, than an unborn child in its uh -huh. mother's womb? What can be more innocent than that? And when we look at the abortion procedure and how absolutely horrific it is, blood is shed. And with a billion of those, I mean, this is modern, ritualistic, satanic blood sacrifice. That's what we're doing. And it's done by guys in white coats at Planned Parenthood and other places like that. People, and on let's say, who work at Planned Parenthood and the doctors who perform it don't understand the spiritual and supernatural implications mm. of what they're engaged in. And therein of, course, therein, of course, lies the danger. Now, in the old days, and we're talking about the Old Testament, uh, the prophets of Baal, among others, used to mm -hmm. offer cattle sacrifices, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sheep, goats, cattle. And, the, of course, there was shedding of blood involved in that, very ritualistic where the blood is offered up. And this brings me to a modern subject. I've written about this. You've written about it. <clears throat> and that has to do with cattle sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Old Testament, we, we hardly bat an eye when we hear about the blood sacrifice of cattle. But we tend to think of that as all, you know, in the past. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened for two or 3,000 years. It's happening right now, correct? Absolutely. In, in, in the Watcher's DVD, there's a whole segment on cattle mutilations. And uh, the, the caveat I would give to the viewer is we have some very graphic footage here. We do it deliberately, not to shock, but to inform. Yes. And, and there's a difference. I mean, we don't you know, spend hours looking at this stuff, but we want to show you, the viewer, that this phenomenon is real. Yes. And it's happening all over the world, not only in the Southwest. Cattle mutilations are happening globally. It is a global phenomena. And what is, are some of the bizarre markers of this phenomena? The blood is drained. Sex organs are cored out with laser-like precision. Eyes are cored out. Tongues are cored out at the base of the throat. The heart is removed from, um, I think it's called the pericardium sac. Yes. Um, without any, any incision. Coyotes won't touch these things. There are sometimes um, electromagnetic frequencies which spike. And on and on it goes. I mean, the phenomena is real and it's genuine. And again, the whole point of making Watchers 2 is to show the viewer that, okay, something is happening, folks. We're not making this up. And it's not uh, space aliens from right. Zeta 2 reticuli who are stopping <laughs> to make a beef sandwich. <laughs> it, it is actually something much more sinister. Much more sinister. And it, it involves blood sacrifice. And nothing has changed. Those gods still demand uh, blood. The false gods, the demons, uh, Paul says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness uh, <clears throat> in heavenly places. And I firmly believe that. And we tend to discount it as, mm, well, it's not anything you can really see. But now we're beginning to be able to see it. Let's talk for a moment about uh, when, it, when it comes to seeing something. What about lights in the sky? A very... A uh, well-known light in the sky occurred just recently over the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. And you've gone a long way out of your way to document that event, to vet it, to see that if it's uh, real. What, what was that light in the sky? And what are all those other lights in the mm -hmm. sky? Well, we, we need to make a distinction between orbs, lights in the sky, uh, and, and craft, hardcore metallic craft. I have seen both. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I saw a metallic craft. Uh, in, in, in 2009, we saw a, a very bright, not an orb, but a very bright light in the sky. Mm -hmm. 
which then dissipated in concentric rings. What came over the Temple Mount, in my opinion, um, more like a plasma-like, it's not an orb, more like a plasma-like object, which, which then hovered. There are four videos, one, two, three, and four. Three has been vetted as a fake. It was, it was Photoshopped. One, two, and four have this double flash that happened very, very quickly in it. And when you look at one, two, and four in sync, um, we can see that, in fact, something very bizarre happens because this thing, this whatever it is, this, this light, this object settles over the Temple Mount for a period of time, about 20 seconds, and then all of a sudden, after these two bursts of light, up in the air it goes very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then we see four red lights in the sky. We're not sure what that is. It appears to be attached to some sort of craft that hmm. this object yeah. then ascends to? Well, the, the Bible talks about uh, lights. It talks about fiery chariots. Uh, <clears throat> a, to me, a fiery chariot would be something like a ball of fire, mm -hmm. a disc of fire, uh, a plasma, if you will. Mm -hmm. Maybe that thing over the Temple Mount qualifies as a chariot of fire. I don't know. We can't say whether it was good or evil, but it does imply that the spiritual warfare spoken of in the Bible is becoming visible. I Absolutely. think that is a key yeah. idea. If, if it vets out that it's true and that this is not an elaborate hoax, and uh, Jaime Musan, a UFO investigator, according to research that I've done and people that I'm in contact with, is flying over to Israel to try to vet this. Mm -hmm. He's contacted the two um, people who shot the original footage, and, and we'll see where all this goes. The bottom line for us to remember and something I, I constantly tell people who ask me, if, if we encounter something like this, we need to rebuke first, ask questions later. We don't know what we're looking at. We don't know whether it's benevolent or malevolent. So I err to the, or err to the side of going, let's rebuke this thing in the name of Jesus and, and go from there. And if it is an angel, a good angel, well then, okay, we, we can vet that. But until then, I, I'm, with all the phenomena that's going on, I think we have to be extremely cautious about how we if we do encounter it, what we do and what our take is on it. Now, UFOs. Everybody's heard about UFOs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and everybody tends to say UFOs slash space aliens. Mm -hmm. We take the biblical view, and we've already talked about that. We believe that we're, we're looking at interdimensional creatures. Uh, they are called principalities. They're called powers. They're called angels. They're called demons. They're called fallen angels. They're... Mm -hmm. Uh, innumerable categories in the Bible of these creatures just behind the veil. But we do know one thing, there is a war in heaven. Uh, you've been to a place where <clears throat> you say that heaven and earth kind of meet interdimensionally. It's called Iseti Ranch. And we've seen that, uh, that ranch referred to in a number of different publications, but odd things are happening there, and I think it would be helpful if you would describe some of the things that are going on there and maybe your yes, ideas sure. about what people are seeing. The first thing we need to understand is that what's happening at East City Ranch is a portal has been opened. It's been opened <clears> through <throat> occult means. Now, those at East City Ranch would obviously disagree with me, and they're entitled to their viewpoint. Sure. But when you engage in, in the type of meditation that these people are engaged in, uh, which is Kundalini and, and astral projection and other meditations which are opening up channels and portals and <clears throat> gateways and allow these entities to, to enter our dimension. It's interesting when, uh, when Gillian, James Gillian, who's the, 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 the creator of this whole thing, sort of, uh, takes people out into the field. He instructs them, and he basically says, you have to invite them in. You have to ask. Wow. You have to have a good attitude and invite them in. Now, what does that sound like, inviting something in? So, in other words, people yeah. are not rebuking <clears throat> first and asking yeah. questions later. Right. They're inviting the phenomena. And then, of course, orbs will come, fairies will come, craft will light up in the sky. They call it powering up. And this happens almost on a nightly uh, occurrence at, at the ranch, which is just it's unbelievable. Fox News, I know, ran live footage or footage that they had recorded up at East Eddy and talked about it. So again, we see that this, this man and, and, his, and his disciples have opened up a gateway and a portal through, a, in my opinion, occult activity, which then allows these things to manifest. That, and to me, that throws a lot of light on Latter-day prophecy, mm -hmm. the idea of being able to open a door that will allow mm -hmm. demonic entities to come through uh, is seen in the Bible in innumerable uh, different ways. And, and also in the Bible, we, we see ways in which 
the latter days will be marked by various phenomena that are involved with a war. Michael and his angels fighting with the devil and his mm -hmm. angels and so forth. So we're seeing a quickening of, <clears throat> of this ancient battle. Uh, the book I'm working on now, and we'll talk a little bit about this in, in Watchers 2, is called The Cosmic Chess Match. And I, I <clears throat> firmly believe that this war has been uh, waged, literally, in the heavenlies for millennia, for, for who knows how long. It, but it's about, as you point out, at some point, and I believe in the near future, it's about to spill over onto this planet because we know from prophecy that at some point in time, the fallen one, Satan, the devil, the dragon, is cast down from the second heaven down to earth and woe to the inhabitants of earth because it, the devil knows his time is short. In other words, he's now stuck in our space-time continuum. He's lost the footing that he was in before, the dimension that he's in before, and he knows sort of the jig is up. And I think when this happens, Gary, we are going to see the supernatural manifest in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. When the book of Revelation talks about the abuso in Greek, the abyss mm -hmm. being opened up, and right. those creatures coming out, I believe that that's literal. I don't believe that that's some sort of nice little you know, bedtime story. I believe right. it's literal. The enemy has been engaged, engaged in, in genetic manipulation, and this is what we're going to see. We're going to see the outpouring of the supernatural interfacing with the natural. And I want to uh, uh, talk to you for a minute about the benevolence, to use a term, of this phen phenomenon. As I mentioned uh, a moment ago, a lot of people say, these are our friends. In fact, the Vatican has sort of made that Absolutely statement. Absolutely, sure. That there are visitors here from other, uh, maybe even other galaxies who are here to help us in this time of great difficulty for us earthlings. How do you feel about that? Well, I feel that this, is, this all plays into what I call the coming great deception. Um, this is what, this will sweep the church away, most of the church. People who are not informed, who don't understand what this phenomenon is, will be deceived. You know, Second Thessalonians tells us that there will be, in the word in the Greek is apostasia, apostasy, which is where we get, there will be a great falling away. And I believe that this, what event, it sort of begs the question, what event would cause millions of people to suddenly change their worldview or their paradigm instantly? And of course, if we yeah. start to see mile-wide craft over the cities of the world, what if that light had not gone away from the Temple Mount? What if it just remained there? Now, all yeah. of a sudden, all eyes are focused on the Dome of the Rock. What is this? Is it benevolent? Is it malevolent? Well, you mentioned a mile-wide craft. Right. Now, surely there can't be any such thing as a mile-wide craft. And yet I know from your video that you've right. talked with a gentleman who saw one, and he goes into great detail about it. Well, there's, it. There, these, these gentlemen, who, the two different pilots and two different aircraft, and it was recorded on radar. Fourteen different witnesses in the one plane. The other plane, complete kibosh, no one is allowed. It was a company airplane. The company would not allow any of their employees to even discuss it. Uh -huh. But the, both pilots reported it uh, on, you know, with the radar. We've got, we've got the transcripts of that seen on radar, but the pilot went on the record. Now, he has no axe to grind in the UFO community. He saw two craft that appeared, and these craft, in his opinion, were both about a mile wide. They were huge, absolutely huge. Now, we're talking about the macroscopic. Let's boil this thing down to the microscopic. Uh, and you may have heard that there are people out there who claim to have been abducted by these craft and by the beings inside the craft, taken aboard the craft, uh, medical procedures performed on them. They come back and later on they report some irritation, some problem where they knew they were operated on and they feel under their skin. And they, I think there's something inside my, my body that may have been left there. Mm -hmm. Now, a good part uh, of The Watchers is devoted to your interview with Dr. Roger Lear. Right. Tell us about that. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating part of the, of the uh, Watchers DVD. And what amazed me is... Uh, and what we try to do, I should say, with the watchers is to really show hardcore physical evidence. So we spent a lot of time on the cattle mutilations and, of course, the so-called implants. The implants are real. Uh, the, the metal is um, metal that has nanotubes, which are not found in nature. And as wow. far as I know, um, we are just beginning to that technology to peer into it. It's extremely complex. When operated on, these implants will literally move away from the forceps which are trying to grab them. When, when they're taken out uh, from the human body, 
Sometimes, of course, they're, they're broken into several pieces. What Dr. Roger Lear has found is that when put into a, um, a vial of the patient's blood, okay, these, these metallic objects, these implants, will then reassemble themselves. How wow. do they do that? When, when the forceps go in to try to take them out, uh, take the implant out of a person, what they find is that the blood, the blood and, the, and the nerves have formed like a protective cocoon, which is exactly the opposite of what should be happening in, in a human body, and yet that's what we see. Well, Ellie, when I think of uh, implants, I think of maybe a farmer, a rancher, uh, putting some kind of a marker on right, cattle, right. so track the cattle, right. keep them, you know, and so forth and so on. Are, are these uh, aliens treating people like cattle? What, what's going on here? Now, what, what we think, and, and this is all, again, speculation, and we don't know, but what, what Lear leans to, and so do I, quite frankly, is that these implants are changing the very DNA of the host. That's you mean as your on. body fluids circulate through these implants, Correct. which, by the way, are not passive, they're active, right. whatever they are. They're doing something. Right. They're doing something. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, the, and are you saying they're converting someone into some kind of a vassal or a slave or altering someone's uh, <laughs> DNA? What, what's going on Throwing here? Throwing a horn out of the center of their forehead. No, I, 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 do think, <laughs> I do think that they're doing something to the DNA. They're somehow recombining a DNA. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. It's a theory that I have. We know from prophecy that some, when certain prophecies, let's say like Psalms 22, Isaiah 53, before the crucifixion, it, no one really overlaid those two prophecies together. So there was no, um, no one knew about the crucifixion. What if Matthew 24 points to the days of Noah? One of those um, differentiations of the days of Noah is longevity four or five, six hundred years ah, lifespan. Yes. What if these implants, and then of course in the book of Revelation, we, we read that uh, men will not be able to die during this particular time in, in, in the tribulation. What if, and it's a huge speculation, but look, I mean, let's not take me out in the parking lot and burn me at the stake. We're just speculating here. What if these implants, in fact, will do two things. Once they're perfected, extend the lifespan to four or five hundred years, disease-free, Okay, and so you will not be able to die hmm. during that time, which would sort of fulfill the two prophecies. And of course, that might be the mark that we're looking at. There is a prophecy in Revelation where men will seek death and not, not be able find to find it. it. Correct. Well, we're talking about bizarre, uh, quote unquote, far out kinds of things, and and uh, from time to time we get email from Christians who say, uh, "There's no need to talk about these things." Christians should uh, avail themselves of uh, the Word of God. They should grow in spirit. They should study Scripture. But this other stuff, we I don't know why you're even delving into this. Tell us, uh, in, in your own words, why we should be aware of, of all these things. Because it's a game changer. Because I, I've done this now for over 20 years. I do it full time. And this thing, we, when, we look, when we look at the New Age, when we look at the, uh, what the other side of the aisle, the exopolitic crowd, is, is promulgating. They are already entrenched in this paradigm. They believe, literally, that E.T. is going to come back and usher us into a new age. This is what they are saying. The church needs to wake up and understand that if people like myself, and you and Tom Horn and others who look at this phenomena, this may be the great deception that we're told. This could sweep away. Let, let me put it this way. If you see a mile-wide craft, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You'll be overwhelmed, I guarantee it. You will be overwhelmed by what you see. So, but if you know a priori before the event, what you're looking at, you can rebuke first and ask questions later. We are in the last days, right? Absolutely, amen. At the doorstep, birth and, pangs. And you know, years ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago, people talked about the last days. I don't think they had a, even a little bit of an idea that we would see the kinds of things we're seeing today. Earthquakes in diverse places, wars and rumors of wars, famines and pestilence and troublesome times. Mm. Look at all the bird deaths and, and the animal kill-offs and the fish deaths, <clears throat> the volcanic activity, the weird weather patterns, the changing of the magnetic uh, pole, and on and on it goes. And on and on. We could talk for another Absolutely. hour. Absolutely. <laughs> in fact, we're going to do that just as soon as we can. L.A. Marzulli, thanks for coming by. My Prophecy pleasure, Gary. Days. Thanks for having me. Again, the two DVDs are Alien Agenda and uh, 
Uh, LA's newest, The Watchers, and you can have both of them for $39.95 plus shipping and handling. Just call the 800 number on your screen. Make yourself aware of what's going on. Gary Stearman, wishing you a great day in the Lord. Read your Bible, particularly the prophetic scriptures, and keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported ministry sponsored by our many friends across America and in your area. For your gift of $10, you can receive a special edition of our current program on an audio CD, or for a gift of $20, we'll send you our programs on DVD videos. For either order, call the 800 number on your screen right now.